All right guys, today is overdue update time. Uh, this is November 27th, 2022, this is uh, Sunday. Man, November's almost over. It has went by pretty quick. So I need to give you guys a well overdue update. It's just another verbal video, but boy, I gotta tell you, this has been a pretty bad week. So, uh, my wife, last Monday, was getting ready for work. She yelled at me uh, to come in there, so I went in there. I could tell something was wrong uh, by the tone of her voice. Her left calf muscle was swelled up huge, and it was bluish purple colored. And she goes, my foot is tingling. And I was like, uh, that's not good. And she goes, I think I'm going to go to the ER. So she went to the ER. And uh, <laughs> come to find out, she has a blood clot in her leg. So neither one of us really educated on blood clots, which we've got quite a bit educated since then, because she wound up in the hospital just a couple days later. So pretty big scare. But anyway, they ended up doing some tests on her and stuff and sent her home with Eliquis, which is a prescription oral medication, a pill. Uh, it's a blood thinner. So anyway, she had shortness of breath and everything. And the back of her leg back there, right just below her knee, uh, she said it felt like uh, not a full-blown muscle cramp. But you could, it felt like a like I was trying to get a cramp. It was that kind of an irritation there. So anyway, they wanted her to come back in a couple of days to the hospital, so she did. And at that point, they hospitalized her. They actually called an ambulance uh, because the little town we live in, uh, they have they basically sent her by ambulance to Tulsa to uh, OSU Medical, and. Anyway, they did a whole bunch of tests over there. They put the dye in her. Um, I can't remember what that's called. Some of you guys will know. But she had all kinds of tests. She had EKG, I think is what one of them was. And then uh, MRI, I think was the other one. But anyway, it's where they put the dye in your body to see where stuff is. And they found out she has a, a blood clot lodged. It actually went from her leg through her heart but right after the heart, it lodged, like right as it was going into the lung, I guess, it lodged. She still has one in her leg, but uh, the doctor said that she is in that lower, very low percentile of, uh, to where it could be a really severe problem, which with the education that we got on it, it just, that doesn't sound right. But uh, anyway, he asked us if we wanted to do surgery or try to do it with just blood thinners and basically we found the risks between both and uh, with complications that could arise from doing the surgery where they literally go in and take the clot out uh, they decided uh, to do oral by medication so she stayed in the hospital and then I, I she's, she's back now but she was in the hospital but I got her back out um, she was only overnight one night but they had her on a IV Heparin, I think is what it was called. Don't quote me on that. Uh, it's basically, I guess, it's a blood thinner as well, but I think it's a little bit more aggressive maybe. I don't know. But anyway, so now she's at home. And uh, I mean, we're both still worried to death about it. You know what I mean? We had no idea of blood clots, uh, how severe they can be. So now, I mean, we were a little scared at first, but like we're really scared now. You know what I mean? But we had a pretty big scare around here, and I got to tell you, that is something that I never think about that. Uh, she's only one year older than I am, and I'm 50, so it's just something that you don't ever think that's going to happen when you're 50, you know what I mean? I don't, anyway. I just assumed I was going to grow old with her and, and then have problems down there in the upper ears, you know what I mean? Uh, that is not the case, as we found out. So anyway, totally unprepared. Especially when you have to pack a hospital bag, because um, they took her by ambulance. I came back here and had to put her hospital bag together, uh, like stuff she's going to need. And never had to do that before, man. I didn't know what the heck to get. And I got to tell you, it, it was... <laughs> it's just not good, basically is what I'm trying to say. 
uh, to have something thrown in your lap like that is just unexpected. So anyway, I haven't really done anything to either one of the cars uh, since. I'm trying to keep a close watch on her, uh, so I'm staying with her in the house. Uh, but, you know, I'll come out here and do a little bit, and then I'll go back in there today. I've kind of piddled a little bit, but uh, I'm going in there like every 15 or 20 minutes because, I'm, you know, in case something happens, I want to be there, uh, like on the spot, you know what I mean? So she's probably going to be off work for all of this coming week, and then after that, I think she could probably go back to work, but... He did say for her not to lay around and prop her leg up all the time. She wants her to, uh, like, do a few squats, like, every hour or so, just a few, because she is getting winded. So uh, even if she, you know, walks from one end of the house to the other, she still starts getting a little labored on her breathing. She has asthma anyway and has to take inhalers and stuff, so it's even, makes the problem worse, you know what I mean? But anyway, so I've had a pretty big scare around here. And uh, we're both still nervous as hell about it. And we have a right to be, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, the, the only update I have uh, on the four-door is I've got the mock-up block in here with the transmission. I started putting a few parts on. And I'm trying to get things, you know, rounded up and adjusted and see what I need and what I don't need. And I wanted to get everything bolted on the engine for mock-up purposes and make sure, you know, finish out what I need to finish out, build what I need to build. Then I want to get the core support on it with the inner fenders bolted in it without the fenders, the front fenders. And then I want to run the AC box, put it in there, run the hoses out and see what I need to do on the inner fenders and the core support baffle and all that with the condenser and the radiator in it and all that stuff. So I, I'm really enjoying the mock-up side of this, or I was before uh, the problems happened with her, but I was really enjoying just bolting stuff on here just to, you know, check fit and do what I need to do. And it's actually came in handy uh, doing mock-up for a few things that I've encountered so far. But anyway, I'll run you through some more of that. But I'll go ahead and talk about the hard top. So I noticed gas prices were down. Uh, I don't even remember when this was. I think it was Wednesday morning. That was, uh, let's see. I think it was Wednesday. I don't remember. Anyway, I noticed gas prices were down to 280 something per gallon. So I thought, well, I'm going to take the hard top up there to the gas station. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up because since I put the car together mostly, I haven't ever filled the gas tank up. I've just put a few gallons of gas in it. So I drove up to the gas station and I filled that thing up. The pump kept shutting off and I filled it up until I could see fuel right down in the fill tube. So anyway i drove back home it was very cold that day i had my wall heater on and i pulled the car back in i closed the garage door well i went back in the house to check on my wife i was in there i don't know 15 minutes or so and i come back out here and all i smelled was gas really really bad so i immediately shut the gas valve off on the wall to the heater and then i opened the door and there was a huge puddle of gas under the car uh, well i say huge it was probably about 14 inches around. So I pushed the car out into the driveway and I climbed under there with a flashlight and it literally looks like where the tube is going inside the round sending unit piece uh, for the gas tank sending unit. It doesn't even look like they soldered it and it's just coming out around that area. So I don't know what the heck. Um, it doesn't look like it's leaking at the fitting or anything like that. It just looks like it's coming out of that part where it's the two pieces are made together. So I had tried working on this over the weekend. I messed with the gas sending unit, the fuel tank sending unit, because my fuel gauge has never worked. And the sending unit is bad. It's not responding to anything. So I ended up, you know, I knew I was going to have to change the sending unit anyway, but I really have to now because uh, it's not even soldered. Just more of those wonderful overseas parts that we buy and pay money for and put in our cars, and they're not made right. Wonderful. Funny how that works. So I have to put a sending unit in this, but there was another issue. So when you put a lot of gas in a car, that's a lot of weight going into the car. I can't remember what one gallon of gas weighs. It's pretty, pretty heavy. But I parked at the gas pump with the butt of the car facing the front of the store. So I walked in the store after filling it up and got a drink. I come back out 
And as I'm walking up toward the back of the car, it is severely leaning toward the driver's side. The car has a bad lean to the driver's side. So I'm like, what the hell, man? I've noticed this thing had a lean in it in my driveway, but I just assumed it was my driveway because my driveway is a piece of crap. Apparently, this rear leaf spring back here is not any good. So these are Posey's 3-inch drop leafs on this car. But I bought them probably in 2010 or 11 or somewhere in there. And I actually put them on a four-door 55 Bel Air that I had. And uh, I ended up tearing the car completely apart like just a couple months later. So I didn't have very much time on those Leafs. Then I put them on a 55 Roadster project I was building. And I never finished it. I never got it running. Uh, and then I put them on this car. So the Leaf, spr leaf Springs have kind of made their way around between three vehicles but you know leaf springs and coil springs when they're brand new they settle and i would think after that many years and already being on one car that drove first i would have thought they would have already settled i've never had any settle uh that late you know what i mean but anyway uh when i got to measuring it uh, it was 15 sixteenths of an inch it's pretty much one inch from from here to the ground difference from the other side so i got a one inch lean that's how far this spring has collapsed or whatever was wrong with it so um i would like to just buy new leaf springs but after checking the prices the leaf springs they're they're like 150 bucks each from speedway uh, but i don't know what the oversized shipping is going to be on leaf springs i imagine it's probably going to be a stupid price but I think my best bet right now is probably to take them out and then take them to Tulsa Spring and have them re-arched uh, to match. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Now, I can't afford to do it right now, uh, especially with the scare going on with my wife. I'm not even going to mess with that right now. So, uh, you know, just in case something, if it gets any worse with my wife, uh, that's going to kind of pinch us a little bit. So uh, I'm not going to do anything right now but that for to save money is what i'm going to end up doing later so anyway i just i, I can't believe it. i've never seen leaf springs have that big of a sag uh, especially newer ones you know what i mean so i'm pretty bummed about that so that's a big mess i ended up draining all the gas out of the tank there's nothing left in the tank I, I love that these have a drain plug on them i drained every bit of the fuel out and i put every bit of it in my pickup it was almost on e so i did put the gas to good use I could have put some of it in a gas jug, but I, I pretty much just put it in the truck and filled it back up. So it's been a while since my truck's had a full tank of gas, so it's kind of nice. But uh, anyway, that's where I'm at. So big mess with a hard top, a uh, big scare with my wife. Uh, but anyway, I did put a, this is a 305 engine block that's empty. There's nothing in it, no crank or rods, cam, nothing. Uh, those are the 305 cylinder heads that I'm going to use, and that is the Turbo 350C short tail that I'm going to be using in the car. But I've got the engine bolted in, I've got the transmission cross member bolted in, and the transmission mounting pad is bolted to the cross member. So the engine's pretty much where it's going to be, which I'd already done all the chassis work, and I built my own side engine mounts and built the cross member and all that stuff. But if you caught the last video I talked about, I want to do a lot more mock-up because I've changed a lot of stuff that I was going with the first time. But back when I sold my motorcycle during the summer to my neighbor, uh, I used some of that money and I bought quite a few little parts and pieces for this car. Um, I've got stuff scattered everywhere in the house for this thing, but it, it's kind of changed direction from where I was first going. This was going to be a really low budget uh, car at first and I think I was going to put it together in primer and just drive it and then I ended up Just deciding to go ahead and rebuild it and build it for my wife and everything I was going to originally use this for my work car for my mobile mechanic business for old cars, but uh, It ended up going to uh, just going to be my wife's Cruiser the the thing about it is my wife is way overdue for a new car again and uh, I, I really hate to spend the money and have a car payment and a full coverage insurance payment. So my idea was to build this to where it was just a really nice, quiet, good riding and driving car with a few safety upgrades and just 
get her into this and then I can afford to keep this on the road and then we don't have to have a car payment. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's a pretty big difference from uh, the fuel pump I had to put in my wife's daily driver car compared to the price of a fuel pump for this car. So it, this I can afford to keep on the road. And when it breaks down, I actually know how to work on it instead of this late model front wheel drive fuel injected crap. You know what I mean? So I just, I've gotten to where anymore. I, I dislike new cars. Uh, you, you pay money for a new car and they just immediately lose money as soon as you pay for them. Uh, so uh, I would rather just get her in an old car and, and go with that. You know what I mean? I know she's going to love it once it's built and done. It'll be a beautiful car. And these cars, when they're stock height, stock suspension and everything, I think they ride very, very nice. So I know she's going to love it. But anyway, I've got the 305 block in here, and I started mocking a few things up. Um, I had bought, a long time ago, I would bought a brand new water pump for this, because I'm going with long water pump stuff, because this is a later model engine anyway. Not that it does, and not that it matters what year the engine is, but uh, anyway... I like long water pump stuff, but I had bought a new water pump for this and had it in the box in the house with all the other parts for the car. But when I rebuilt the engine for my 87 GMC, I used that water pump on that new engine. So this one is for mock-up. Uh, this one was still working, but I'm not going to put it on here because it probably won't last very long. Be my luck. But that is the intake I'm using. That is the valve covers I'm using. Um... So I've got the alternator set up on here. I'd rebuilt this alternator and put it together, but uh, I need to change the pulley out because I'm using a V-belt system on this. But anyway, I started bolting a few pieces on just to kind of help with the mock-up. But I'm trying to get a lot of stuff bolted on the engine, and then I can go to the inner fenders and the core support uh, and then start mocking up the air conditioning components, the hoses, the dryer, the condenser, you know, all that stuff so I can figure out what I need to weld and modify and cut and do all that stuff too. But I am really enjoying it. Uh, I was really enjoying it before the big scare with my wife. But uh, anyway, I, I, I think I talked about in my last video, I had some stock exhaust manifolds from like a 70s, late 70s, I think, El Camino. I really don't know what they're off of. Uh, I know when I bought my 400 small block from a guy, it came out of a 75 or 6 El Camino. One of them did. I've got two 400s. Uh, but I had those manifolds from that, and I think that's why I think they're off that. I tried the one on this side, and it actually is going to fit. It actually is going to work. So uh, the other side, I wanted to put the steering box back on it and then try to put the manifold on. But from looking at it, it looks like it's going to clear just fine. But uh, they had dirt dauber nests in them, and they're really, really scaly, rusty. So I stuck them in muriatic acid in a tote full of muriatic acid. So hopefully it'll clean them up a little bit. But anyway, I'm kind of enjoying the mock-up a little bit. I, this is my first day to get back out here in a long time that I've started messing with stuff again. So right now I've got my little small-bodied Holly here, fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump. And I had to take the screws out of the base of it to clock it. Uh, so now I'm messing with fittings and everything, trying to figure out, you know, where everything's going to come out at. I'm going to be building my own uh, steel flared fuel line for the from the pump to the carb with a, a factory style glass bowl fuel filter in line. But anyway, I've already run into a couple of issues. So I bought a fitting here from eBay just uh, when I decided that I was going to go with an Edelbrock there like a week ago. So this guy advertises on eBay that this fitting is for an Edelbrock Performer carburetor, which is exactly what that is, to run a 5 16 fuel line to. And it's too long. It uh, doesn't go all the way down in there. So he's going to get bad feedback for that. So what I'm going to end up doing, instead of having to mess with sending this back and all kinds of crap over a $10 part, uh, I am just going to cut it and rework the, thread on the threads on the end to where it's just shorter. This is how long it's supposed to be on the part that goes in the carburetor. And this is the part, his part. So there's no way that's going to fit. It's hitting something when you get it about halfway down in there. So I am having fun. It, uh, you know, doing this stuff where you don't have to worry about painting everything and making everything look awesome. Uh, this is the fun part. Uh, but also when I go back to paint everything, I don't have any surprises. So, the other problem I ran into, I'm going to have to go see if I can get some fittings for this, or 
I'm just going to end up drilling and tapping this NPT one size bigger. So I got a reproduction of the glass bowl fuel filter here. It even has the AC logo on it. And this is what factory would have had somewhere up in this area. But I do want to put this in line to get that originality look. Uh, but also it does function correctly. But it has tiny holes in here. I don't know what size thread that is. This thing is a little bitty. So some of these fittings that I have here for 5 16 fuel line, there's no way they're going to fit in there. But you can kind of see a line cast around it uh, to where it could be one size bigger. So that's why I thought I might drill it and tap it. But I am going to try my local Napa because I have a huge selection of fittings and see if I can get a, uh, you know, flared fitting to to go in there for a 5 16 fuel line because I'm, I'm running all 5 16 fuel system on this, even though technically 305 had three eights on it from the factory. Um, I just happen to have these fuel pumps that, you know, have a real teeny tiny hole in them basically for 5 16 and I had a brand new 5 16 fuel, uh, sending unit. So that's why I decided to go with 5 16 line and stuff because you know, the car's not a race car. It's going to be for my wife. It's just going to be a cruiser. So, and also with it being an Edelbrock, uh, I feel a little bit more comfortable at the, about that because, you know, that basically the carburetor fills up with fuel all the way across. So I think the 516 will be just fine. Now, if that was a 350, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't want to do 516, but, which it, it might still be okay, but I just wouldn't want to take the chance, but. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much where I'm at. It's just mock-up stuff, and I want to do all the engine stuff first before moving on to bolting the inner fenders and the course board in and the condenser and building the AC lines and bolting the AC box in and all that kind of crap. But I need to get some straight boot plug wires for those exhaust manifolds, but I'm not going to get those until I find out that the you know this manifold fits over here, which I'm probably not going to buy plug wires until I get way ready for the engine and the stuff be painted and put in the car for good so that's uh that's pretty awesome with the manifolds that i chose because they take straight boot plug wires and it's going to be so simple my wife can change the plugs herself without any special tools a socket and a 5 8 you know 5 8 plug socket and a ratchet she can change them herself so uh, i i just it'll be so simple you know what i mean um and I do kind of want it to where, you know, she can work on it herself, but what else? What else? What else? What else? I do need a couple of fittings. I need a 90 degree fitting for this with a barbed fitting so I can put my uh, PCV hose directly to my PCV valve. So I need to get that while I'm at the at Napa. Hopefully they'll have one. But anyway, I can show you the uh, air cleaner set up here. So... This is what I decided to do with the factory air cleaner. Uh, I basically put a filter in a filter, if you want to call it that, because this is originally an oil bath, and I'm not running an oil bath in this. This is a k and style filter. Um, but anyway, I'm basically going to run a longer carb stud, run a wing nut down to this one, and then put the, the factory lid on, and then put an air or a wing nut on top of that. So uh, anyway, it'll be getting... Uh, air through it again it's not a huge filter it's pretty tall it's just not big diameter i think this is a six and a half inch or something or six and three quarter inch but it doesn't matter it's just a little 305 and we're not building a race car you know what i mean but i plan on making my own plug wire dividers but i want them to look kind of like stock originals uh, i've still got a hole saw out the intake for the front wheel fill tube uh, just some of the stuff. You know, it's going to be kind of fun messing with this crap, but I do need to get the radiator mounted and the fan shroud that I have for it mounted, and I want to make sure that my fan I'm going to use uh, fits. I actually have a clutch fan from a G-Body, and I'd much rather run a clutch fan on this since it's going to have air conditioning on it than running the steel uh, flex-style fan that I have, which the fan I have, it's not a real thin, flimsy flex fan. It's solid steel, but it it basically i guess would be classified as a a flex fan which i think technically you're not supposed to run a flex fan with air conditioning but i've, I've seen cars that shows that have it all the time but whether it cools good or not i don't know but uh, this one does have a lot of blades on it that i have but i would rather run the clutch fan so i'm another one of the mock-up things i want to try 
but anyway guys that's that's pretty much the update on what's going on around here i haven't really done anything i got the car or the engine in the car and that's about it um, this thing of my wife you know it's it's got me nervous so i'm pretty much not doing a whole lot uh, without being really close to her just in case you know she yells my name i'm going to be there within a five seconds you know what i mean so i can tell you one thing uh, when you're married to somebody for 30 years like I have been, I know there's guys that's been married longer and stuff, but when something like this happens and they admit her in the hospital and you find out this is actually could be life threatening, it really changes the ball game. Uh, this was something I never expected. She didn't expect it either. And it makes you rethink things like it really does. Like we don't have a will, we don't have life insurance. So it's like, wait a minute, you know, we need to do some thinking about this, you know what I mean? But anyway, guys, uh, hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, I still have leftovers in there, man. Uh, they're almost gone, though, <laughs> especially the desserts. <laughs> Thanks for watching.